737. Hi boys and girls, welcome back to my channel. I am back today again at Kuala Lumpur International Airport. This is my second time this year back in the airport because today I am flying to East Malaysia, Sabah. I've got my ticket. This is a trip I've been planning for years. In 2021, Sabah was almost completely cut off from the rest of Malaysia and they have their own quarantine system going on that means as a Malaysian I have to do quarantine when I arrive in East Malaysia almost the entire 2021 we we just couldn't go to East Malaysia because of the quarantine rule and finally in December last year the quarantine rule has been lifted you don't need any more testing and you don't need to quarantine finally in East Malaysia and that's why I'm going let's check out the domestic flight from Kuala Lumpur to East Malaysia no, I have not been to the domestic terminal here in TLA for a very, very long time. Okay, I passed to security. As I said, there is no need for quarantine or PCR test anymore now for East Malaysia. But there's a form that you need to fill in, health declaration form that you need to fill in for both Sabah and Sarawak. And the form will ask you details like your contact number, where are you staying, do you have any symptoms, and all the other details you have to fill that in. You will be given a QR code. Fill in this and submit this before you head to East Malaysia. So let's check out now the domestic terminal here at KLIA. And everything seems to be open and normal. So unlike the international terminal, the domestic terminal is alive and is buzzing. There are lots of people here because most domestic flight has now resumed back here in Malaysia. Things are as they were as I remember them. So that's great. Um, I have a feeling that a lot of the shop at the international terminal moved to the domestic terminal because I've seen brands that have shops here that I have never seen before here at the domestic um, terminal so I think they moved here which is a good idea and this is the terminal where this is a security checkpoint where international uh, arrival will pass through uh, for transit here in domestic and it doesn't seem very very busy at the moment uh, I would say at this time there are no international arrivals going through the security checkpoint coming into domestic at the moment yeah, um, there are still a lot of empty stalls here that uh, used to be um, opened. So this is, we're at gate A and still some shops are not being opened. A lot of my international friends do not know that Malaysia is consists of West Malaysia and East Malaysia. The distance between Kuala Lumpur and Kota Kinabalu, the capital of Sabah, which I'm going, actually further than Kuala Lumpur versus Bangkok. So Malaysia is quite spread out because of these two mainland geographical area. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the state of Sabah, the history of Sabah. Sabah is one of 13 member states of Malaysia. It is located on the northern portion of the island of Borneo, hence the previous moniker of North Borneo. It is the second largest state in the country after Sarawak, which it borders on its southwest. Sabah is often referred to as the land below the wind because of its location just south of the typhoon prone region around the Philippines. The island of Borneo, the third largest in the world after Greenland and Papua New Guinea, has been discovered by Chinese explorers. In 1775, the British East India Company opened a trading base in Balambangan Island. However, it was the British North Borneo Chartered Company who effectively ruled Sabah from 1881 until 1942 when the Japanese occupied the state in World War II. 
After the devastation of the war, Sabah became a British colony until 31st August 1963 when it obtained self-government from the British. On 16th September 1963, Sabah together with Sarawak, Singapore and Malaya joined the Federation of Malaysia. The origin of the name Sabah is uncertain. One theory is that it was referring to Sabah because of the presence of Pisang Sabah, a type of banana. Second theory is that it comes from the Arabic word Sabah, which means morning, as Sabah is the first state in Malaysia geographically to see the sunrise every morning. In 2019, the state government estimate put the population at 3.9 million, making it the second largest population after Selangor. However, considered Sabah size, it is one of the most least populated states in Malaysia. People from Sabah are generally called Sabahans and identify themselves as such. There are an estimated 42 ethnic groups with over 200 sub ethnic groups with separate own languages, culture, and belief systems. The three largest indigenous groups in Sabah are the Kadazan Duzun, Bajau, and the Murut. We got this new thing installed. I don't know how they're gonna use it, but it seems like a new gate. Oh, we are boarding.
I just realized it. I just realized my first time flying Malaysia Airlines this year. I'm really, really glad because their service is still perfect and food has improved. So well done, Malaysia Airlines. And we're heading to the arrival gate here. So I've just cleared immigration. There's a special immigration here. They will check your health uh, form. So be sure to fill in the form because they do check the health form. So you pass that, you will go to immigration and you need to show your identity card if you're a Malaysian or your passport if you are a foreigner. So that's it. Those are the steps to come into Sabah, which is now back to normal as it used to be which I am so glad. Very happy with my room, very happy with the view, and I think I'm gonna have a very nice time here in Sabah. Finally, I'm here, and finally, it is now as easy as it is to get into Sabah, and you see how the situation is flying into Sabah now. My Sabah adventure can finally begin, and I will see you in my next video, which is going to be all the delicious food and cafes of Kota Kinabalu. So, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!